Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service today as we gather at St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Telford, Pennsylvania. We greet uh, those of you who are here in person and those of you who are worshiping with us online. Please remember, as uh, any needs come about, to fill out one of the Sunday bulletin insert forms and uh, place it in the offering plate on your way out. It's been really helpful to us to receive your feedback, and so we do read everything, and uh, namely, certainly those that are providing names on our prayer list. And just an encouragement um, to take the bulletin home with you and to rip out the prayer sheet and to be intentional about praying for those names on our prayer list each week. For today is sometimes called Good Shepherd Sunday, as Jesus is called the gate of the sheep in today's gospel. The risen Christ opens the way to an abundant life as he anoints our head with oil and guides us beside the still waters of baptism, of which we give thanks for today and all of our remaining Sundays at Easter. As you come forward to receive Holy Communion or as you leave our worship space, Today, you're invited to dip your fingers in the water as a remembrance of your baptism. I'm especially mindful this morning of those who have died or those who are dying. The gospel promise of life after death is profoundly heard in the valleys of the shadow of death. And so we remember all of our loved ones who have died. And especially today, we extend our love to the family and friends of, of Miss Debbie O'Brien, who has recently entered her eternal rest. For Debbie fought the good fight of faith and is now gathered with her Lord. We give thanks this morning for the altar flowers sponsored by Lori and, and Randy Groff in honor of their 29th wedding anniversary, which is today. So happy anniversary uh, to both Randy and Lori. And we also give thanks today for the worship bulletins provided by Jim Stover in memory of, of Elaine. And so, Jim, we thank you for that remembrance. Uh, also today, I would like to extend a happy birthday to, to Lee Ford. Uh, Lee is not among us today, but it is his birthday. Uh, please be mindful, uh, a word of thanks to our green team for what they offered us last week. There are plants that are still available, so if you did not pick one up, last week. Please take one today. Also know that as we gather after our worship for coffee and snacks and um, those wonderful conversations that we have extends hospitality to one another. And so they are important and I rejoice when I see you having conversations with one another. Thank you to our kids who are leading us in worship today and I do want all of our children to know how special they are to Jesus and to all of us. Thank you for bringing us your joy. A reminder of the sign up for Thriving Action Teams on the bulletin board to my right near the parlor. Uh, still looking for some communion assistance. We had one person last week who uh, volunteered, so thank you. And also to our feeding ministries, our blessing box, remembering it's there that as you shop for food for your homes, to be uh, remembering to provide food through the blessing box for others. A special thanks uh, to Ashley Bromley, our church administrator, for keeping such good track of our ministry events and many opportunities and providing them in the bulletin announcements. There is a wonderful t-shirt that you might have seen before. Uh, it's, a, it's a white t-shirt that simply says, it has been in the bulletin. And so uh, <laughs> often there's things, well, I didn't see it. Well, it's been in the bulletin for weeks and maybe even months. And so I would ask you to be attentive to just a few of the announcements with our, uh, our wanderings, wondering and wanderings, our Bible study, which is coming up this Thursday, Bear Creek Work Camp, the Green Team event, which is right around the corner, and then also the wonderful opportunity to gather with brothers and sisters in Christ for the Indian Valley Cluster Ascension Service on Thursday, May 18th. And then also the Henry Muhlenberg and Lutheran Church uh, Lecture. We've invited uh, all of the churches in the Upper Bucks Conference to be with us. We're anticipating a very large group, and uh, thank you to our saints and sinners who have arranged this to happen, so please mark that on your calendar. And for families, you'll see all of the uh, activities that are coming up, VBS, our summer work camp, uh, and also Bear Creek Camp. Those are our many, many announcements as we share our ministry together 
We give thanks now in this moment for the waters of baptism. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Thanks, Kathy.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen, amen. Let us pray with one another. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our children are invited forward for a children's sermon. Okay. Now this is either going to go really bad or maybe not so bad. I know there's a computer. Don't get too excited about the computer. Your mom has a computer. I think, yeah, most of us have computers. But, uh, all right, I've got to put in my passcode. Nobody look. All right. Let's see here. All right. Now, before we uh, move, because I'm going to have you moving, and then I'm also going to be using the mic to try to get the sound so that everybody can hear this, I wanted us to know that today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and today is called a Good Shepherd Sunday. So you have Jesus and the sheep. Um, this is a little bit harder today because, you know, none of us, well, I don't want to say none of us, because this church continues to surprise me. 
and especially you. Do any of you have sheep? I have to ask. No, no you don't. You're going to buy sheep. Of course you are, Everett. That's right. <laughs> Everett's going to buy sheep. That's... So it's harder to make this, but Jesus is the shepherd, and we are the sheep, and so shepherds are here to help and to guide the sheep. And often, sometimes, a shepherd needs to give a little whack on the sheep's butt to get it doing the right things, right? Okay, so today is about shepherds and sheep. And the final thing before we watch this two-minute video is to know that a shepherd has a certain voice that sheep listen to. So sheep, when they're trained, won't follow somebody else other than the shepherd. And what this lesson means is that as we continue to learn and to hear the voice of Jesus, our prayer is that we're listening to his voice and not all the voices of people who are trying to get us to do bad or unfaithful things, okay? So Jesus' voice is the one we're to listen to. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come over here, and then I'm going to kind of be centered, and I want you to be able to look at this video. So come on around this way. And then what I'm going to do is take my microphone and then hold it near the speaker. Oh, boy, this is going to be interesting. All right, here we go. All right, so here it's a two-minute and 50-second video, and it's going to be about this person who's the real shepherd and who's not. So here we go. Shepherd, Alan. Shepherd's just another word for pasture. Out here in beautiful nomad farms uh, where you know, our worship leader, Mark Nicholson, is running this farm. But I am today with the, the shepherd of the family. This is David Nicholson, a true life shepherd. He tends the sheep here, preaching on Psalm 23, David. And uh, everybody says that sheep recognize the voice of their shepherd. And I'll be a stranger to them. So are they going to are they going to come if I call them? No, sir, they aren't. Are, are they going to come if you call them? Yes. Okay, we're going to check this out and see if sheep really know the voice of their own shepherd. Okay, so he's okay, the shepherd. Okay, so the sheep are out in the pasture, and I, I'm a shepherd. So let's see if they come. Sheep, come. <laughs> so the sheep oh, are sheep, moving. Let my sheep go. Sheep, please come. <laughs> sheep, sheep, come. Are they coming? Sheep, no. my sheep won't come. Okay, let my sheep will go. Oh, sheep. David, this is not working. They, they don't, they don't know my voice. So, here you go. Here's your chance. Can you All get right. those sheep over here? Yes, sir. Come on, sheep. What's happening? Whee! They're going to him. Come on, sheep. Come on. <laughs> and now we cut to the beautiful music that comes in movies, right? That's perfect. Okay. Let's see what happens. So they had this, this guy who was a pastor. And so... You would, and he had a staff, right? And he was calling them. And what did the sheep do? Did they listen to him? No. And that trains pretty well as a pastor because nobody listens anyway, right? <laughs> hey, that's right. No, no pulling your mom into this, Everett. Okay. Um, but then we have this young boy who's just like us, right? And, but he was the one that trained the sheep and loved the sheep. And so he had this beautiful call, and what happens? As he called out, the sheep come to him. And so that, that beautiful, simple video is a way for us to think and also to listen to the voice of Jesus. So I'm going to read this beautiful prayer that we just read just a few minutes ago. And this is our prayer for today. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk into the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, thanks for coming forward, and you're going to go back to your seat. You're going to be a part of our worship today, and I know we're going to have somebody reading in just a few minutes, so thanks for coming forward, and uh, your brother is going to read. That's right.
reading from Acts. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon every one because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and devote, de, distribute them the proceeds to all as any had needed. And day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Peter. It is a credit to you if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you do, when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he has, was abused, he did not return abused. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live in for righteousness by his word wounds and having and 
wound. You have been healed from you, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your soul. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Have you seen it? So just a a word of thanks uh, to Hudson. Very proud of you, buddy, for doing that. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us today. So once when I was uh, flying for a trip, I I can't even remember which trip it was, I was waiting in the airport terminal for my flight, and I was given the opportunity to witness a drama that often happens between parents and young children. A mother and her young boy, whom I'm guessing the boy was about four years old, were sitting just a few seats away from me right across. The little boy looked pretty excited to board the plane because I heard him say to his mom that he wanted a window seat so he can see those birdies. I believe his mom would have promised him anything at that point because he was jumping up and down, excited, all over the place. But right before the flight was to be boarded, I saw the little boy's face turning bright red. He started screaming, no, no, to his mother. I felt his mom's pain, but in all honesty, I was so glad I wasn't in her shoes. (laughs) The frustrated mom then stood up and started walking. As she walked, she waved to the little boy for the little boy to follow because she wanted him to go into the bathroom before the flight little boy refused because he was so excited to see the birdies and he didn't want to miss them. So at that point, I didn't even pretend that I was reading my book (laughs) because I was watching a conflict of wills and I knew that someone had to give in. Then in an instant, she ran towards the boy, grabbed his hand and started yanking him into the bathroom. The mom got him into the bathroom all right, but he was screaming and kicking the whole way in. After witnessing this event, I prayed silently that this mother and child would not be sitting directly behind me (laughs) on the airplane. Enthusiasm, excitement, anticipation. I have noticed in my own life that it takes an awful lot nowadays to get me excited, an awful lot to get me enthused, because maybe I've seen that thing before or I don't want to seem silly or ridiculous. I'm never suggesting that we need to flail and scream our arms like a young child wanting to see the birdies, but maybe we can think a little bit more about moving some of the excitement and enthusiasm of the gospel message 
into something that is productive and meaningful among us. I wonder if we can think about that one thing that gets us individually excited, excited enough to commit our lives to, and wonder if at any part of that excitement and enthusiasm can be, or continue to be, a part of our shared ministry with one another. For today in our lesson from Acts that Hudson read on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we have been given this very intimate snapshot of the early Christian church after the followers of Jesus, or we dare say the sheep of Jesus, have begun to finally answer the question, so what's next? What are we to do now? The followers of Jesus have experienced the, the post-Easter Sunday rush when they heard the good news of his resurrection and then experienced even more of a rush when they saw Jesus coming among them to wish them peace. After being so uncertain throughout his ministry as to who this Jesus really was, they now know who he is, and because they now know, they are enthused and excited to be a community of faith that gathers in the name of the Lord. They are grateful to be a people who praise God for the good news of the shepherd, who protects them behind the gates of love and mercy. And so they gather. They learn from the apostles teaching just as we do. They have fellowship with one another just as we. They eat and drink from a table with generous hearts. We do the same. And they praise God through their prayers of thanksgiving, and we most certainly do the same. But the one thing that may be different from our communities of faith versus that early Christian church is that it's often much more difficult to be enthusiastic as that early Christian community because we've been waiting for almost 2,000 years for the return of Jesus. In fairness to all of us, these people just experienced in real time the most transforming event of the world. And so who could not help but have a childlike excitement and enthusiasm? I don't know, maybe it's because it's been such a, a beautiful spring. Or maybe this word of God has stirred up in me once again a desire to really have an abundant life not just for my own self, but for this particular community of faith. And because of this desire for God's abundant life, I am enthusiastic about the mission of our Lutheran presence in this beautiful valley that they call the Indian Valley and the future that we have with one another. I want you to know that I am inspired and grateful to be your pastor. And I believe in what we do here and the community of faith that we are and will be. But although it is an exciting time, it can also be an uncertain time. Because we are trying to do in our lives what is best and right, and so we still struggle in trying to figure out how we can be the ministries that God desires of us. I, like you, wrestle with how to bring about an abundant growth among us, but have realized that we have not been called by God to produce an abundant growth just for the sake of growing or for the sake of congratulating ourselves on our accomplishments, but that we have been called by God to be disciples who follow Jesus' call to tell others about the good shepherd, Jesus. We scatter seed. We also prepare ourselves for the fact that we will not always see the growth that we desire or expect. But an abundant life is never one of material items or even the things that we can measure. But abundant life is always in relational terms. I, like you, struggle with my place in these modern lives as an abundant life can be interpreted by the things that we have. But we have learned already that abundance of things does not necessarily mean to an abundant life. An abundant life, then, is lived in the presence of God and one another, whether one is in green pastures or the darkest valleys, God is present. I know that the reading from Acts today and the community which is described 
has almost an experience that is idyllic, but it is something that is, un, un, is not sustainable. It feels almost kind of like a, a sacred vocation or a holy pilgrimage. For everything may be perfect for a time, but sooner or later, real life comes crashing in. There are bills to pay, job to work, grass to mow, dishes to wash, people to care for, all of the stuff of life. But let us never dismiss the vision of community as something impossible or something that we should not strive for. Because like most of the best and meaningful things that we have experienced in our lives, these things begin with God moving in and through us. The risen Christ then opens to all an abundant life as he anoints our head with oil and guides us to the waters of baptism. And so we go forth today to be signs of the resurrection and extend God's loving care to all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As beloved children of God, 
we now confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please kneel or be seated for the prayers of intercession. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You are the shepherd who gathers us in your mighty and loving arms. Help your church, especially the community of St. Paul's, to listen for your voice, especially when the voices of sin, idolatry, and oppression threaten to overpower us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The green pastures, still waters, and dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O oh Lord. Sustain your creation with a love that is both mighty and just. Where there is destruction, bring healing. Where there is desolation, bring abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You proclaim shepherding love comfort, and protection for all people and all of creation. Direct leaders in our own time to learn from your example and instruction. Give them servant hearts that they generously seek the good of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You journey with us wherever our paths may lead, and we know there is never a place or time where we are that you are not. Like a mother who can recognize her own child's cry from among many, you come to us when we call out. We pray for those feeling overwhelmed by anxiety or depression or suffering in any way, especially from this assembly. We pray for Maxine, for Mary, for Suzanne, for Al, for Tracy, for Sharon, for Ann, for Robert, for Linda, for Samantha, and for those we name aloud from our lips or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You are the sheep gate that gives safety to your beloved flocks. Provide protection for refugees, victims of domestic violence, those who are imprisoned, and all people who are vulnerable to violence and mistreatment through the Ministry of Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray today for Brady Farrington, who celebrated his baptismal anniversary on April 26th. We give thanks, O oh God, for your grace and love you have graciously given him through his baptism. Hold him close to your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You call your sheep by name and lead them through the valley of death. We give you thanks for those who have died and now dwell in your house forever, especially Elaine and Debbie. Be with those who mourn and give them hope in the promise of resurrection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is good. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you always. From your pews, please share the peace of Christ with one another.
Let us pray with one another. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be our thanks and it is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mm -hmm. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which has been given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, <coughs> gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. <laughs> Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. For those receiving Holy Communion from their pews and from their homes, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you, keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and to serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in a new creation. This concludes our worship for today. Now go in peace and serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.